Whether you have an iPhone or an Android, it doesn't matter. Here are some Instagram photo tips for how you can consistently take quality photos with your phone. Or even how like your mom or your best friend or your husband can take quality photos with your phone. What's up everyone, it's Millie. Welcome back to my channel where I post videos every Wednesday teaching you the latest strategies and trends on social media to help you grow your brand. So give a little love tap on that subscribe button to stay up to date on all the latest tips and tricks I have for you. First, I wanna say a huge thank you to this video shout out. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. So if you wanna shout out in one of my future videos, be sure to screenshot yourself watching this and tag me over on Instagram stories or leave a comment below and subscribe to my channel. As always, timestamps will be in the comments down below because I value your time and you already know why you're here, so. Let's get into it. Tip number one, make sure your camera settings are correct. The first step to making sure your photos are quality is by simply checking the camera settings on your device. For iPhones, you're going to go to your phone settings, go to camera, formats, and select most compatible. And then when you're taking pictures, make sure you're taking pictures using the main camera on your phone, not the selfie front facing camera. Okay, and then for Androids, when you're going into your camera, go to the settings, make sure your scene optimizer is on as well as document scan to make sure each photo is clean and crisp. Since I don't have a screen recording for Android users, I'll be sure to link videos, blogs, everything that I've found for photography tips and phone settings down below in the description. Now for my own research purposes, I'm curious if more iPhone people or Android people are watching. So comment down below which one you have. Tip number two, use attachable lenses. I cannot tell you how much attachable lenses have literally changed the game and stepped up my Instagram. The best part is that attachable lenses are for any phone type. Doesn't matter what kind of phone you have, there is attachable lenses out there for you. So, <laughs> The first lenses that I found were on Amazon. It's a four lens beginner kit for like $20. I got this beginner kit just to test how often I would actually use it. And when I found that I had the wide angle lens attached to my phone 24 seven, that's when I decided it was time to upgrade to the Sandmark wide angle lens for $99, which I 100% recommend because like $99 attachable lens compared to like a $500 camera plus lenses and all of that. If you're wondering what the difference is between these two things. Um, there's a lot of differences between the $20 kit and the 99 uh, Sandmark lens. So obviously with the $20 kit, you get four lenses. You have your wide angle lens, your macro, your fisheye, and this one is the telephoto lens. So this is like for really, 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 really far away shots. Like there's a bridge all the way over there and you want it to look so much closer. So that's what this one is for. So yes, you do get four in one, but I will say attaching it was kind of a pain in the butt because it comes with this little squishy guy. You would squeeze it on top of your phone like this and you would have to line up this hole exactly with the shape of your phone camera. And if you didn't, then you would see the black edges peeking through. I'll put examples here. And that wasn't a huge deal at first, but gradually over time it became really annoying because I would take really great wide angle photos and then I would go back to edit them and there's like this weird outline or it looks almost What's the word, vignetted, vignette, vignetting. So that was just really annoying. And then like, I thought the wide angle lens was good with the, the four lens kit, but then buying the wide angle lens with Sandmark, it was a way bigger difference. So here's a picture of my phone camera, just regular crop. Here's a picture of the wide angle lens from the kit, the beginner kit. And then here is the Sandmark wide angle lens. That was amazing, um, just the extra room and attaching it to your phone was a lot easier. So every single lens comes with a phone case to fit your phone and it's simple. You just pop off the back and you screw it onto the case. And that's just really easy to just like doop, 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 doop. Okay, it's attached. It's perfectly in alignment. I don't have to worry about any weird borders. Here, let me pop this off, take a quick photo, pop it back on, stick it in my camera bag. And just having these lenses were a lot easier to take around than like this big guy when I was really only using one little lens. I didn't really need all of this. Okay, so the question that I'm sure everybody is wondering is if I have the wide angle option already on my phone, then why would I need a wide angle lens? This is something that that has been kind of recently developed in cameras where you can like do the wide shot, you could zoom out and it's like 0.5, whatever. If you already have that, then what's the purpose of having an attachable lens for the wide angle? Like, 
I don't get it. Well, first things first, not everybody has that. My iPhone X doesn't have a wide angle lens option, but let me talk about my husband's phone, for example. So he has the iPhone 11 Pro Max. While he does have the wide angle camera that's built in and it looks great, the unfortunate side is when you're in a low light situation and you're using the wide angle lens, it actually results in more of like a noisy image. So the picture gets a little bit more grainy and looks less quality. But then if you pop on the wide angle attachable lens to the main camera, not using the wide, it has the main camera on your phone or on iPhones actually has a better sensor. So if you're in a low light situation, you can get a clear image and that wide look. You know what I mean? So it actually just helps guarantee that the quality of your image is going to be better instead of having to rely on your phone's sensor and all the things that maybe doesn't have the capabilities of doing. I'll be sure to link both the beginner kit and the Sandmark lens down below in the description if you're curious about them. Now, if you're looking for a picture perfect place to take those travel vibes, drool worthy Instagram photos, then look no further. Allow me to introduce to you the Marina Fiesta in Cabo San Lucas, who is also the sponsor of today's video. So recently I went to Cabo with my two Galvez friends and we had a blast. I was a little nervous at first because three girls traveling alone can feel pretty sketchy, but the location of the Marina Fiesta made us feel so safe, which was a huge burden lifted off our shoulders and our mom's shoulders. <laughs> it was located right on the Marina, giving us beautiful views from our room rooms like this. And then using the tips from this video, my friends and I were able to take photos like this with just my phone. Like that's it. Because I don't trust myself traveling with my new camera yet. Let's be honest. <laughs> Between the three of us, we each paid $240 for a five night stay, which included breakfast. Oh, and it was so worth it. So if you end up going or traveling in the near future, I definitely recommend checking out this location. They have an underground spa where we got a full body massage. And when you go to the pool, make sure to order a mango margarita with chamoy and tahine. Oh. I want it already, yum. I'll be sure to link their website down below for you to easily book your next vacation. Tip number three, give yourself some extra space. This is one of the most common mistakes I see people make when I give out Instagram audits, and that is forgetting about Instagram crop. Am I right? When taking pictures, you need to give yourself a little extra space and anticipate for the Instagram crop. So when your friends or your Instagram bestie or your husband are hyping you up and taking pictures of you next time, ask them to take a few extra steps back. This might feel really weird at first because it's like, that's not the photo I was going for. Because after the photo is taken, you can always crop in the photo, but not crop out the photo. You can't make up more photo after the photo is taken. So for those of you who are visual learners, here is what you see when taking pictures. However, the camera ratio that you're seeing is not the same ratio as Instagram's widest ratio four by five. So you wanna keep your subject within this border. For Androids, you actually have an advantage because you can select the ratio that you want to take your pictures in. Now, why is this important? This helps with the overall quality and look of your feed. This will help prevent your photos from cropping out the top of your head or your feet, and it helps the photo just look more full and complete. While you might be thinking, oh, it doesn't really matter, if you go to a feed and a bunch of pictures are like that, where half of the person's face is chopped off or the feet are chopped off and there's just a bunch of weird composition things happening, you might not be aware of it, but subconsciously it's harder for your brain to digest it all and it just doesn't feel complete, I guess. Tip number four, study what you like and what you don't like. When I first started shooting with my husband back when he was my boyfriend, the experience wasn't always is enjoyable. <laughs> this is because he would take my picture and I'd be like, I don't like it, try again. And we would try again and go back and forth, back and forth a million times till both of us were really frustrated and eventually we just gave up. When someone shows you the photo they just took, take time to study it. What do you like about it? What do you not like about it? Was it the angle? Was it your pose? What was it? Communicate that to them and then create a plan for reshooting it. Sometimes you might not know right away what you like and what you don't like. So when you're starting out, try recreating other people's photos and poses. Use their images as inspiration and then go from there. If you do this, it is important to understand that everybody's body photographs a little bit differently. So if you try on a pose and you don't like it, change it up. 
find a different pose that works for you and your body type. It's all about communication with your photographer and you feeling comfortable, confident, and beautiful in front of the camera. Eventually what I found out with my husband was I enjoy pictures a lot when they're taken from down below. And when they are taken from down below and I don't like a photo, it's usually because of my posing, not his photography. So I can communicate that to him being like, hey, you're doing amazing. Keep doing what you're doing. Let me just change up my poses a few times and just encourage them like, hey, you're doing great at this. This is on me or vice versa. If it's like, hey, could you actually shoot a little bit lower? And if you can, if they can see the phone, can you help me make sure that when I'm posed, my hair st isn't sticking out in the back? Or can you help me when I'm posing this way, making sure I'm not looking down because it creates this weird double chin. You know what I mean? So communicating with your photographer about your likes and dislikes, and that goes a long way with increasing the quality of your your photos because that communication also builds confidence and trust between you and your photographer. Tip number five is trusting the entire process. Okay, now that you've taken 300 pictures in one outfit and you hated all of them except for maybe three, but you can't really decide if you like it because it just feels very blah, it's time to remember to trust the process. We've all been there. Most of my photos look boring or feel blah before I edit them. Editing makes the world of a difference. So here are a few basic edits that you can do to increase quality of your photos. Okay, so this photo, it's great. I'm walking, I'm centered. The person's down low, right? It's, it's nice. Feels a little blah to me. It's like, okay, how can we spice this up? How can we make this match my feed? Just a few general tips. Um, as you could see, some things that I look for are the whites and blacks. You could see my sweater, it's kind of blown out. So you can't really see the texture on the top part of the sweater because the lighting is so strong there. So I might bring the highlights down a little bit so you can see a little bit more texture there. And then same thing with the blacks. On my leg, you can't really see my leg. <laughs> it's very black. So I'm gonna bring the blacks up. Um, so that's just quick little fix. And then for effects, you can go to texture and increase the texture to um, have a little bit more oomph to your photo. Something that I really like to do, especially if my face is involved in the photo or it's a little closer to my face, is I'll bring the texture up to maybe like 15 to 20. And then I bring the clarity down because the clarity down kind of gives my face a little bit more of a glow. Let me show you on a picture with my face in it. Okay, here's just a selfie, right? You can see a lot of things happening on my face. Um, we could go to effects bring that texture up so there's some quality there see how it sharpened the photo a little let me go before and after just a little bit more sharpness but then I bring the clarity down and my skin has softened a bit uh, that's an option and then so that's how you can make your skin a little bit softer as well as going into detail if you notice your photo is a little grainy or there's noise there's the noise reduction so you could bring that up to decrease that noise bring things a little bit closer together and then as well something that i like to do with full body photos is using the distortion and going to vertical and then bringing my feet closer to the camera so that just gives it more depth and it looks like it was taken with like a cool wide angle lens when it was just my phone. So then I crop that in, make sure it's Instagram crop four by five, crop out the whites that are showing in the border, boom, and then I would use my preset. Finally, the basic edit when you're cropping, um, make sure if there's any lines in the photo, for example, I'm walking, you could see the line where the wall meets the floor. You want that to match, be a straight line. So I'm gonna t tilt the photo until it's perfectly so now quality photo before, after. It was kind of weird at first, but now we got somewhere. We're good with it. If you're looking for just like a full editing tutorial on how I edit my photos, you can watch that video here. Or if you don't like my editing style, which is fine, and you wanna figure out how to create your own editing style, then I definitely recommend watching this video. If you've made it this far and you're not already subscribed to my channel, be sure to kick that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss when I post my next one. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Follow your joy. Bye.